In my last video, I showed you some ways how Western propaganda spins these uh, Xinjiang police files that were allegedly hacked and sent to the notorious uh, Adrian Zenz, who uh, is a Christian fanatic, uh, hating the Chinese Communist Party and, and initially refused to even look at Xinjiang because there was no evidence, but on, on pressuring by BBC, he then ended up writing a lot of things. A lot of reports that, if you look at it closely, are very thin indeed, as he said, in evidence. So, so they use like, a, a, you know, like child care, care facilities as a proof that the government takes away the children from, from, from the parents. Uh, where in fact, like, if you want to enable uh, women in precarious uh, situation, poor women, to get a job, you need to take, uh, give them a place where they can put their children so they can, can go to work. This is actually something that a lot of uh, people on the left in Europe are demanding that our governments give more of these facilities so women can choose to work if they like. So that's not a symbol of oppression. Uh, just one example. So again, Adrian Sens, he's, he's a, a very like uh, odd personality. Uh, uh, and uh, even besides his personality, his reports are not very credible. But again, through him, uh, they've uh, sent these images who they are, we don't know. It may be somebody from these uh, guys that he works with, the, uh, communist uh, victims of communism memorial which is related to the US government and and s creates like this propaganda where they uh, call you know Nazis killed in World War II by the Red Army uh, victims of communism because they were killed by communist forces fighting Nazis so yeah that's some background uh, then I've started looking at these pictures here some more um, in Germany there's a huge fear of the government. So Germans are very afraid of being surveilled, supervised by the government. And the media obviously know that they feed this fear. And so they show cameras to make Germans feel like, oh, look how horrible this is. Uh, if you've seen my video from Kashkar, yes, there are a lot of cameras. Um, there's also a lot of cameras everywhere else in China. That's just the way they, they provide public security. Unlike Europe, there's much less police on the street. So there's very, very few patrol cars where you actually see police officers. They much more just have cameras. Uh, I don't even know if all of them are working. Sometimes in China, maintenance is something that they don't really take very seriously if, if, if it's not an important location. But okay, they may be working. Even so, they're just to, to surveil a situation and if something happens the police would then have to still come so that's the way uh, in china security is handled and it works very 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 well i mean the safety in china that's really impressive uh, for women to go home at night alone there's like no risk at all it's a very safe country but um yeah they they show these cameras and, and to make germans feel like oh my god that's horrible and what i find really despicable really disgusting is how the moment these these images from the Xinjiang files uh, came out, and if you look at my last video, I still find they're very like weak. There's not much evidence in those videos of anything, but just how a prison works. And they claim, of course, that one million people were in camps and that all these camps are prisons, uh, which is not corroborated by any evidence. I mean, there may be a million people who got education in any shape or form, and of those, the most extreme were sent to high security prisons. There's absolutely no reason for China to waste all the money to put all of them in high security prison and give like four police officers for every, you know, mother who gets like a, a language course. Uh, why would you waste so much money? By the way, there's not a single woman shown in any of these police files. So, so there's been a lot of trainings, especially targeted at women because uh, the traditional Islam that uh, was, or tra I don't even want to call it traditional Islam, the extremist Islam that was threatening Xinjiang, that also like in in enticed young men to do terrorist uh, attacks. That form of extreme, uh, yeah, I call it Islam, but people who actually believe in, in, in Islam, please, you know what I mean. I don't really want to equate those people with the original religion. Um, that extremism that really like 
push down women and didn't give them any rights. So women have to cover their hair. Uh, they cannot choose who to get married to. It's their parents or brothers who decide. It's the man in the family who decides what the woman can and cannot do. So, so to empower women is a big part of this anti-terrorism push in Xinjiang by the Chinese and that's what I've seen as well. Like if you go to Kashgar now, the girls, the, the Uyghur girls, they are completely free. They're, they're speaking their language. Their Mandarin isn't always that good. Uh, they speak uh, Uyghur language, uh, as do the kids. And um, they're dancing and they're shooting TikTok videos. And, and um, that's all not possible in the previous uh, atmosphere of, of fear and, and extremism where girls dancing and, and showing their hair was all considered sinful and, and dangerous for the girls themselves. Um, Despicable is a guy like this green politician, what's his name, um, Hofreiter, and the Green Party is one of the, of the government parties in Germany right now. He instantly, the moment these images came out, said, we have to work more closely with the US. Now, how has the US fought terrorism, Islamic terrorism. They've killed a million people in Afghanistan. They've killed a million people in Iraq, most of them Muslim. When they were defeated by the Taliban in Afghanistan, they placed an embargo on Afghanistan that is killing Muslims at this moment. So now they're showing me some images of which like a few show some beating scars on the back of a man. And they're telling me because of that, we have to work with the guys who are starving, literally starving a million Muslims to death right now in Afghanistan with an embargo, which does not allow other people. It doesn't allow Chinese, Iranians, Europeans to help those people in need because the embargo in the US does not allow them to give any money. You won't find a bank that helps you send money to Afghanistan. So those people who are starving Muslims to death, are the ones we're supposed to work with closely because in an anti-terror operation in China, some, some, some men were beaten. That's just sick. And that's the state that we're in in Europe.